welcome to the next edition of the HP Discover podcast series. I'm Dana Gardner, Principal Analyst at Inter Arbor Solutions, your host and moderator for this ongoing discussion on IT innovation and how it's making an impact on people's lives. Our next big data case study discussion focus, uh, focuses rather on the Tower of Babel problem for data and how elation maps across data disparity while employing machine learning and crowdsourcing to help centralize data knowledge. We'll explore how Alation makes data actionable by keeping data up to date and accessible using such innovative means as experts and systems. So to learn more about how enterprises and small companies alike can access more data for better analytics, please join me in welcoming our guest. We're here with Stephanie McReynolds, Vice President of Marketing at Alation in Redwood City, California. Welcome. Thank you, Dana, glad to be here. We're glad to have you. So I've heard of crowdsourcing for many things, and machine learning is more and more prominent with big data activities, but I haven't necessarily seen them together. Um, how did that come about? How do you and why do you need to employ both machine learning and experts in crowdsourcing? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Traditionally, we have looked at data as a technology problem, at least over the last five to ten years. We've been pretty focused on New systems like Hadoop for storing data and uh, HDFS as a file structure rather than databases or as a complement to databases. Um, but what's interesting, if you look at how organizations, when they go to apply data, there's often a gap between the data that we have available and what decision makers are actually using to make their decisions about. There was a study that came out within the last couple of years that about 56% of managers have data available to them but they're not using it in their decision-making process. So there's, <laughs> there's a human gap there on how you can apply data to be successful in making business decisions. And that's where a real return on investment always comes from, is the application of the data rather than just the storage of it in an insurance policy. So um, the concept of crowdsourcing this data or tapping into experts around the data gives us an opportunity to bring humans uh, closer into the equation and leverage machine learning techniques um, for what they're good for and human experts um, as additive to that solution of how data can be used and applied to solving real business problems. Now, usually when you're employing people like that, uh, it can be expensive and it doesn't scale very well. How do you manage the just fit for purpose approach to crowdsourcing where you're doing a service for them in terms of getting the information that they need and want to evaluate that sort of thing? How do you balance that? So what's interesting, you know, I think that the term crowdsourcing can be interpreted many ways, and I think what's interesting in the approach that we've taken at Alation is that machine learning actually provides a foundation for tapping into human experts. So we will go out and we'll look at all of the log data that you have in an organization about what queries are being used to access data in databases or Hadoop file structures. And that creates a foundation of, of knowledge that the machine can learn um, to identify what data would be useful to, to catalog or to enrich with uh, human experts in the organization. And that essentially is a way to prioritize how to tap into um, the, the number of humans that you have available um, to help create context around that data. And that's you know, a great way to um, partner with machines to use humans for what they're good for, which is establishing a lot of context um, and business perspective, use machines what, for what they're good for, which is um, cataloging the raw bits and, and bytes and, and showing folks where to, uh, where to add, add value. And, and so what are some of the business trends that are driving your customers to seek you out to accomplish this? What's happening in their environments that requires this unique approach of the best of, of machine and, and crowdsourcing and experts? So there's, there's really two broader industry trends um, that have converged and created a space for a company like Alation. You know, the first is just the immense volume and variety of data that we have in our organization. So if that, if that weren't the case, that we weren't adding additional data storage systems um, into our, our enterprises, um, there wouldn't be a, a good groundwork laid for Alation. But I think more interestingly, perhaps, is a, a second trend, and that is around self-service business intelligence. So as we're increasing the number of systems uh, that we're using to store and access data, we're also putting more weight on 
um, typical business users to find value in that data and trying to make that as self-service as possible. And so that's created this perfect storm for uh, a system like Alation, which helps catalog all the data in the organization and make it more accessible for humans to uh, in interpret in accurate ways. And we often hear in the big data space, the need to scale up to massive amounts. But it appears from, as I understand, Alation, you're able to scale down. You can uh, apply these uh, benefits to quite small companies. Um, how does that work when you're able to uh, help a very small organization with some typical use cases in, in that size organization? Yeah, what, what's, what's really interesting is even smaller organizations or, or younger organizations are beginning to drive their business based on data. So um, take an organization like Square, uh, which is a, a great brand name in the financial services industry, but is not a huge organization in and of itself. Um, or in inflection or invoice to go. We have many customers that have um, data analyst teams that maybe start with five people, 20 people. We also have customers like eBay that have close to 1,000 analysts on staff. And so what Alation provides to both of those organizations is really a, a centralized place where all of the information around their data is stored and made accessible. And even if you're only collaborating with three to five analysts, you need that ability to share your queries, to communicate on which queries addressed um, which business problems and which tables uh, from your, your Vertica database were appropriate for that, and maybe what Hive tables on your Hadoop implementation you could easily join to those Vertica tables. That type of conversation is just as relevant in a five-person analytics team as it is in a thousand-person analytics team. And so, uh, Stephanie, if I understand it correctly, <clears throat> you have a fairly horizontal capability that could apply to almost any company uh, in almost any industry. Um, is that fair, or is there more specialization or customization that you um, uh, a, a apply to to make it more valuable given the, the type of company or type of industry? The, the technology itself is a generalized technology. And, you know, our founders come from backgrounds at Google and Apple and, you know, companies that have developed very generalized computing platforms to address big problems. Um, so the way the technology is structured is, is general. I, I would say that the organizations that are going to get the most value out of an Alation implementation are those that are data-driven organizations who have made a strategic investment to um, use analytics to make business decisions and incorporate that in the, in the strategic vision for, for the company. Uh, and so even if we're working with very small organizations, those are organizations that – uh, make data and the analysis of data a priority. And, um, you know, that, that today is not every organization that's out there. Um, you, you do need to be of a, a, a certain size and have a certain focus in the industry sector to, uh, to, to go down that path. So not every mom and pop shop is uh, going to have an elation instance in their IT organization. Okay, fair enough. So given those organizations that are data-driven, that have a real... Uh, benefit to gain by doing this well. Um, they also, as, as I understand it, want to get as much data involved as possible, regardless of its repository, its type, the silo of platform, and so forth. What is it that you've had to do in order to be able to satisfy that need for disparity, uh, variety, if you will, across these data types? What was the challenge for being able to get to all the types of data that you can then apply your value to? Yeah, at Alation, we really see variety of data as a huge asset rather than a, than a challenge. So if, you know, if you're going to segment the customers in your organization, every event, every interaction with those customers becomes relevant to understanding who is that individual and how might you be able to personalize offerings or marketing campaigns or product development to those individuals. Um, that does put some burden on our organization at the technology organization to be able to connect to you know, lots of different types of databases and file structures and places where data sits uh, in an organization. And so um, you know, we, we focus on being able to crawl those source systems, um, whether they're places where data is stored or whether they are uh, business intelligence applications that um, use that data to execute queries. Um, or a, a third important um, data source for us that uh, may be a, a bit hidden in some organizations um, is all the human information that's created 
um, the metadata, if you will, that's, that's often stored in wiki pages or business glossaries or um, other um, documents that describes the data that's being stored in, in various locations. And we actually crawl all of those sources and um, provide back um, an easy way for individuals to use that information on data within um, their, their daily interactions. Typically, our customers are analysts um, who are writing SQL queries, um, and all of that context about um, how to use the data is surfaced to them automatically within their query writing interface violation so that um, they can save anywhere from 20% to 50% uh, in the time it takes them to write a new, a new query during the day-to-day -day job. And how are, is your solution architected? Do you take advantage of cloud uh, when appropriate? Uh, are you mostly on premises for your, using your own data center, some combination, and where might that head to in the, in the future? Yeah, we, you know, we, uh, being a, a young company, we were founded about three years ago, um, we uh, are really, you know, we designed the system to be agnostic to, to where you want to, to run uh, Alation. So we have customers that are running Alation in concert with uh, Redshift uh, in the public cloud. We have customers that um, are financial services organizations um, that have a, a lot of PII data and, and privacy and security concerns, and they're running on-premise uh, typically uh, an Alation instance. And so um, we really architected the system to be able to operate in different environments and have an ability to, um, to be able to catalog data that is both in the cloud and on premise at the same time. And the way that we do that from an architectural perspective is that we don't replicate or store data within Alation systems. Um, we really use metadata to point to the location of that data and any um, analyst who's going to run a, a, a query from our recommendations that query is getting pushed down to the, the source systems uh, to run uh, on-premise or in the cloud, wherever that data is stored. And um, how did uh, HP Vertica come to play in that architecture? Did it uh, play a role in the ability to be agnostic, as you describe it? So we, we actually use HP Vertica in, um, in one portion of our, our product um, that allows us to provide uh, essentially kind of BI on the BI that's happening. So Vertica is used as a, a fundamental component of our re reporting capability called forensics that is used by IT teams to find out um, how are queries actually being run on systems, which backend um, database tables are being hit most often, and what does that say about our organization and how we might be uh, maintaining those physical systems. So it gives the IT department insight on um, what day-to-day -day, uh, elation is typically a, more of a business person's uh, tool for interacting with data. Interesting, and uh, we've heard from HP that they expect a lot more of that uh, IT department-specific ops efficiency role uh, and use case to, to grow. Um, do you have any sense of what some of the benefits have been from your IT organization to get that sort of analysis? Um, what's the return on investment, if you will? Yeah, the, the benefits of um, an approach like Alation are really getting insight into the behaviors of individuals in the organization. So what we've seen at some of our larger customers is, um, you know, they may have dedicated themselves to a data governance program where they want to document every database and every table in their system, hundreds of millions <laughs> of, of uh, data elements. And using the Alation system, what they were able to identify within days typically is what the rank order priority list is of what they actually need to document versus what they thought they had to document. And so the, the cost savings comes from taking a very data-driven, realistic look at um, which projects are, are going to produce value to a majority of the, the business audience and which pro projects maybe we could hold off on or, or spend our resources uh, more wisely. Um, one team that we were working with um, they found that um, about 80% of their tables hadn't been used by more than one person in the last two years. And so in that case, you know, if only one or two people are using um, those systems, um, you don't really need to document those systems. That individual or, or two individuals probably knows what's, what's there. Spend your time documenting the, you know, the 10% uh, of the system that everybody's using and that everyone's going to receive value from. Okay, um, before we close out, uh, any sense of where Alation could go next? Is there another um, use case or um, 
application for this combination of crowdsourcing and machine learning, tapping into all the disparate data that you can and information, uh, including that human and tribal knowledge, where might you go next uh, in terms of where this is applicable and, and useful? Yeah, I think, I think if you look at what Alation's doing, it's very similar to what Google did for the internet in terms of being able to catalog all of the, the web pages that were available to individuals mm -hmm. and surface them in meaningful ways. I think that's a huge vision for Alation, and we're just on the early part of, of that journey, to be honest. So we'll continue to, um, you know, to move in that direction of being able to catalog for an enterprise and make easily searchable and findable and usable all of the, the data information that is stored in that organization. Well, very good. I'm afraid we'll have to leave it there. We've been examining how Alation maps across disparate data while employing machine learning and crowdsourcing to help centralize and identify data knowledge. And we've learned how Alation makes data actionable by keeping it up to date and accessible using innovative means. So a big thank you to our guest. We've been joined by Stephanie McReynolds, Vice President of Marketing at Alation in Redwood City, California. Thank you so much, Stephanie. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. And a big thank you as well to our audience for joining us for this big data innovation case study discussion. I'm Dana Gardner, Principal Analyst at InterArbor Solutions, your host for this ongoing series of HP-sponsored discussions. Thanks again for listening and come back next time.